from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli. We are prepared both mentally and physically to defend our country wherever we are needed. We fight our country's battles in the air, on land, and sea. While no one likes to fight, we are firmly dedicated to the belief that someone knows how. First to fight for right and freedom, and to keep our honor clean, we are proud of the readiness entrusted to us, and we pledge ourselves to adhere to the standards of excellence expected of us. We are proud to claim the title of United States Marine. We are few in number, but many in ability, skill, and professionalism. We welcome the challenge and challenge those who will join our ranks. We are the few, the proud, your United States Marines. Big round of applause for your United States Marine Corps Band and Master Gunnery Sergeant Paradis down there doing a nice job. Detroit, are you enjoying this so far? I'm telling you, we've had a great day. We're so glad that you're all down here celebrating with us. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome now to the 1st Marine Expeditionary Force K-9 unit out of Camp Pendleton. As our Marine Corps band marches off, we'll soon see the working dogs make their way in. Well, the chief trainer down there today is Sergeant Donald Schmidt. And the handlers are Corporal David Mikowski with working dogs Rosie and uh, Corporal Albert Tabreccio with military working dog Joker down there. Today they'll be showcasing some of their abilities and giving you an insight into the job field. The Marine Corps uses four different types of dogs to aid in its mission. The patrol drug detection dog such as Joker, have been certified to locate narcotics and possess the patrol capability as you would see with any normal police force. Next up, though, we have the specialized search dogs, such as Rosie. These dogs have the ability to be worked off-leash at distances of up to 300 meters. Much like Joker, the next type of dog that we have is a patrol explosive detection dog. These dogs also possess the patrol capability but the difference between Joker and this type of dog is that these dogs have been certified to locate explosives. The fourth type of dog that you'll see down there today is used as a combat tracker dog. These dogs are used to track human odor back to the individual. Now these dogs help in a variety of ways, such as searching buildings, roadways, and even open areas. Let's watch now as our Marine canine teams show us a little bit of their capabilities down here along the riverside for Marine Week Detroit 2017.
Now watch him. Come on, Detroit, make some noise for our K9 teams down front and center here. What an opportunity to see these working dogs in action. Nice job there from all of the Marines and their furry companions at the first Marine Expeditionary Force K-9 unit. We'd like to thank you for visiting Marine Week Detroit. Big round of applause, everybody. For the furry friends and our Marines making it happen down there. Well, now, we've all seen movies with hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat, but I'm telling you, what you're about to see here in a few more moments is going to leave you uh, absolutely speechless. I want to bring up next the gentlemen that make up one of the most iconic teams here that we have all day. I'm talking about the Silent Drill Platoon. The Marines before you represent nearly seven decades of marching and rifle precision drilling. Premiering at Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. during the sunset parades of 1948, these Marines perform their precision drill in hundreds of public appearances throughout the United States and abroad each year. In addition, they represent the Marine Corps at numerous ceremonies in the National Capital area, honoring visiting dignitaries and heads of state. Comprised of highly trained infantry Marines from Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C., the Silent Drill Platoon executes its drill sequence without cadence or even verbal commands. The M1 rifle that they carry with fixed bayonets weigh in excess of 10 and 1 half pounds. Representing Marines, Marines around the world, the Silent Drill Platoon demonstrates the finest in Marine professionalism, esprit de corps, and discipline. The platoon commander is Captain Gregory Jershak of Bedford, New York. The platoon rifle inspector is Corporal Jarris Wade of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Ladies and gentlemen, Marine Barracks, Washington, D.C. proudly presents the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon.
Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Marine Corps Silent Drill Platoon. Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Commandant of the Marine Corps, General Robert Neller, I'd like to thank you for attending today's Marine Air Ground Task Force demonstration right here at Marine Week Detroit. We're honored you're here, but we'd also like to thank Mayor Mike Duggan and all of the great people from the city of Detroit for their generosity and hospitality in allowing us to be here all week long. My name is Matt Jolly from WarbirdRadio.com, host of Warbird Radio Live. And I'll serve today as your narrator for this demonstration. And my goodness, do we have a good one lined up for you today. The Marine Air Ground Task Force, or MAGTAF, as it's commonly called, is a term used by the Marine Corps to describe the organizational structure that they use as a foundation to conduct military operations. The MAGTAF is comprised of four elements, the command element, the ground combat element, the air combat element, and the logistics combat element. Now by combining these four elements, the Marine Corps enables a single commander to accomplish a specific mission by commanding both air and ground units. For example, for the purposes of Marine Week Detroit, the Commandant of the Marine Corps established a special purpose MAGTAF to execute this mission specifically for you today. Now, the value of a MAGTAF is characterized by its ability to perform a broad range of military operations while being forward deployed. These operations can include anything from full-scale combat operations to humanitarian assistance. The ability to be continually deployed and capable of answering our nation's call to arms has earned the Marine Corps the nickname of America's 911 force. Now, today, you're going to see an example of the broad capabilities of the Marine Air Ground Task Force. You'll notice a wide variety of aircraft throughout the demonstration. The majority of the aircraft used within the MAGTAP are designed for either close air support or transportation for ground forces. However, because of the varying capabilities of the different aircraft, other specialized missions are also available. Today, you'll witness a demonstration that combines the efforts from both the air and ground elements. For today's demonstration, the MAGTAF has been forward deployed to the city of Detroit for a theater security mission to ensure the 2017 Detroit Lions football season kicks off on time and on target. Now, according to intelligence reports that we've just received, the President of the United States was informed last night that the game ball for the season opener had been stolen by a terrible pilot well, pirate, actually, Captain Campbell. Codename Lucky Charms, the Carolina killer from Swainsboro, North Carolina. She's been sowing mayhem and wreaking havoc all across the Great Lakes. In fact, there used to be some light poles down there where you're standing. She took those, and last night, just because she could, she took the game ball. So, ladies and gentlemen, the situation in Detroit is critical and demands action. Our Commander-in-Chief has made the decision that has been made over 200 times since World War II. Send in the Marines. Now last night, Colonel Chandler Nelms, the Special Purpose MAGTAF Commander, assembled his crisis action team and began rapid planning for the execution of Operation Lions Nation. After quick planning, the Commander decided the best way to suppress the target was by striking it consecutively using his F-18 Hornets, followed by Marine artillery. To enable his plan, members of the Marine Corps Fire Support Team, or FIST, were inserted by Marine Corps helicopters onto a landing zone in the vicinity of Belle Isle. Now, the teams then conducted the strenuous movement with both speed and stealth, arriving here at the riverfront, where they immediately began conducting operations. Ladies and gentlemen, it appears that the Marine Corps intelligence has reported seeing that Captain Lucky Charms right down there on the barge with personnel taking the football onto it as well. Now until this hostile threat is eliminated, the game ball cannot be retrieved or delivered to today's event. But fortunately, 
the Marine Air Ground Task Force is equipped to prepare and handle a situation just like this. Look left, and soon you'll see the FA-18, a multi-mission tactical aircraft that provides the Marine Corps with close air support. 20 millimeter cannons, 500, 1,000, 2,000 pound bombs. As the Marines like to say, we got it. Watch now from the left for the strike. A successful hit. The pilot flying the lead FA-18 today is Major Tristan Gertston, his weapon system officer today. On board there as well. The second plane, Captain Kyle Gentry from Woodstock, Georgia. His weapon system officer, Captain Michael Watts from Lawrenceville, Georgia. Now, though they can fly high and fast, it's the guys on the ground that often clean up the mess and get it done. What we are soon to hear will be an actual call to fire in real time. Let's listen live now as that happens. Steel Rain, this is Phalanx 1-5. Fire for effect, over. Phalanx 1-5, this is Steel Rain. Fire for effect, out. Grid, 1-7 Tango, Lima Golf, 320-879, over. Grid, 1-7 Tango, Lima Golf, 320-879, out. Personnel with heavy machine guns in the open, over. Personnel with heavy machine guns in the open, out. Message to observer. Kilo, three rounds, target number, Alpha Bravo, one, zero, zero, one, over. Message to observer, Kilo, three rounds, target number, Alpha Bravo, one, zero, zero, one, out. Shot, out. Shut up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the shot has been fired. It's coming from Bell Island. The Observer, Captain Jeff Smith and Sergeant Blake Broomfield are down there calling it in. Let's watch and see if we get a direct hit. Target number Alpha Bravo 1001. Heavy machine guns and personnel neutralized. Over. Phalanx 15, Steel Rain, in the mission. Target number Alpha Bravo 1001. Heavy machine guns and personnel neutralized. Out. Well, now it appears that the firing mission produced a direct hit, neutralizing the enemy forces. The fire support team will continue reporting on the enemy while the amphibious and heli borne forces move into position. The CH-53 Super Stallion that you're about to see is a heavy lift helicopter, the largest, in fact, from all of the military. The aircraft can carry a 26,000-pound light-armored vehicle, 16 tons of cargo, or enough combat-loaded Marines to lead an assault or a humanitarian operation. But perhaps what's most amazing about the largest military helicopter in the U.S. is what it achieves despite its size. Though powerful enough to lift every aircraft in the Marine inventory, except the KC-130, the CH-53E Super Stallion is compact enough to deploy on amphibious assault ships. It has the armament, speed, and agility to qualify as much more than just a heavy transport. The pilots flying today, Major Patrick Ryan and Major John Martin. Now just down the river, out of view, that big CH-53 dropped in the Special Purpose Marine Air Ground Task Force. Guys in the rubber boats, the cricks as we like to call them. Direct your attention down river there to the left and look for the Reconnaissance Marines in Combat Rubber Raiding Craft, or cricks as we like to call them. They're moving into position right now. 
Their goal is to get there to that barge and conduct a bottom-up visit, board, search, and seizure, or VBSS for short. Now, once the Cricks and Reconnaissance Marines have conducted the bottom-up, or VBSS, Colonel Nelms will direct the Heliborn Force to assess the area and to offload Reconnaissance Marines via a fast rope over the barge and conduct a top-down VBSS. This is just like you see in the movies, folks. Happening, though, for you right here, front and center, at Marine Week Detroit. Now, the Heliborn forces consist of two rotary wing aircraft, the AH-1Z Viper and the UH-1Y Venom. For the folks at home that can hear me right now, this is the modern-day Calvary. The Cobra, today known as the Viper, will position itself up top and keep a watchful eye as our Marines prepare to board that barge. The Marines look like they're down on the deck. Watch now as the Venom slowly moves away and high atop the Viper keeping it watchful eye. Both of these aircraft are, of course, world famous. Used to be called the Huey and the Cobra. The Viper now and the Venom is their known. Four blade versions, venerable aircraft and helicopters that served in Vietnam. Watch now though, as our reconnaissance Marines prepare to take out the pirates on board that barge. Just imagine what's going through their minds as they try to tackle Lucky Charms, that evil little pirate princess out there on the barge. Not to worry, though, we have plenty of firepower here and we can handle it. The Huey, as we used to call it, is a twin engine, medium sized helicopter that you saw fly there. A 50 cal in the door or a 7.62 inch minigun. The weapons are employed by the helicopter and the crew chiefs, who are all enlisted air crew members. In addition, the Venom. Formerly known as the Huey, also carries 2.75 inch rocket pods and can operate an advanced navigational and targeting thermal imaging system. A nice job there by our heliboard forces. Now we're going to talk about something completely different for you today, folks. If you look downriver, you will see one of the latest aircraft in the Marine Corps arsenal. I'm talking about the MV 22 Osprey. It's not a helicopter, it's not an airplane, it's a tilt rotor aircraft. But this thing is straight out of science fiction. I want you to watch now as those giant 10,000 pound engine pods begin to transition forward, taking it from vertical flight into horizontal flight. That's right, eight degrees per second. Those big booms can come down, those big nacelles. That translates into changing from an airplane flying around 250 miles an hour into a helicopter that can land in about 15 seconds or vice versa. Now, you're not going to be able to hear as these things come forward, but I want you to watch the transition because it's something, as we said earlier, straight out of science fiction. Watch now as your Marine Corps MV-22 Ospreys complete the transition. Commander today in the lead MV-22 is Major Bosart, his co-pilot, Captain Kim. The crew chiefs are Corporal Stallings and Corporal Lee today. That Osprey capable of deploying an assault force using a fast rope insertion 
which is used when the helicopter can't land or the environment is too dangerous. They can also actually land in almost zero visibility, a truly incredible piece of machinery. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it appears as if the reconnaissance marines on the barge have eliminated the enemy forces, and we think they have the game ball in hand. It is imperative now that the Marines immediately egress and deliver that game ball to the head Lions official, ensuring the integrity of the opening game. Five of the Marines will soon be conducting the special patrol insert or extraction, commonly known as a spy rig. Now this is the stuff that you see in the movies. Now, they got in with the spy rig, they're gonna get out with the spy rig. This is what it's all about. This system developed as a means to rapidly insert or extract, as we have been talking about today, these folks from the barge. Now watch here as the helicopter swings into view. Those Marines that are down there on that barge with a game ball in hand will soon be hooking up their D-rings into the spy rope. Now the second safety line will be attached to a second D-ring, so they are doing this safely, but folks, don't try this at home. The helicopter will soon lift vertically once they're all attached, and we'll know what's going to happen when they start walking forward to take the slack out of that spy rope. Now the rope and personnel are treated as an external load, and the air speeds, altitudes, and even the oscillations all have to be monitored by not only the pilot, but by the crew chief that's hanging down there in the door watching over his fellow Marines. Now, if you can do math, you know that there's an additional eight Marines that are going to be left down there on that barge. So how are we going to get those folks to shore? They're going to actually carry the game ball, I'm told, in the combat rubber raiding craft, the Cricks. This craft, again, specially fabricated, rubber inflatable boat, often used by the Navy SEALs and the Marines, provides the Marines over the horizon transportation inserting lightly armored raiding parties or reconnaissance teams onto beaches, piers, offshore facilities, and larger vessels. Now watch them. The helicopters are inbound, and soon those Marines will be hooking up on the spy rig to fly away to safety. The other Marines will be loading into the boats. Now there's the old Cobra. I keep calling it a Cobra, but actually a Viper now, with the four-bladed rotor system on top. Watch him as he pulls up here into the vertical. He's just going to do a little pivot turn, a little pedal turn for the aviators in the crowd. Watch him, though. Always in constant view of his Marines. The imaging systems, the ISR systems on that helicopter are second to none. Now we'll watch as the rope is lowered. And keep a lookout for the Marines on the barge as they start to maneuver into position to get linked up. Now, for the folks at home or those who can hear me, this happens much more slowly in real life than it does on the movie. Somebody asked about this earlier. They said, well, why don't they just hook up and go? Well, you have to do all the safety checks and make sure you don't leave anyone behind. Because in a maneuver like this, you only have one shot to get it right. Hopefully old Lucky Charms has gone down below. Maybe they can get her out of there too. We're gonna watch now as they continue to work this situation. Keep an eye on it. I'm telling you folks, watch these Marines as they move out of here. I'm told now the game ball has been secured. We're watching from on deck as well. We have cameras all over the place here today. If you're watching via Facebook Live, we're glad you're joining us. Be sure and share this video with all your friends later on today. Hopefully, the Marines will come to your hometown sometime. You can see this in person. Any second now, we'll start to see these Marines walk forward, signaling that it is almost time to lift off from harm's way and hopefully get that game ball back to safety. take about three minutes, 40 seconds, just under four minutes to get these guys hooked up. 
We're almost there. I see a lot of movement now on the deck. There we go. The Marines are actually starting to move forward towards the helicopter. Again, all of this is designed to keep the slack out of the rope to make sure their final safety checks are completed. Come on, Detroit, make some noise for your United States Marine Corps as our reconnaissance Marines are soon taking flight one by one right there in front of you. They can hear you holler from down there, I guarantee it, as they fly away. And check that out, the Marine Corps flag hanging down from our Marine on the bottom of the spy rig there. A nice job by all of our airborne Marines right now. Now look down below, and let's transition back, because upon establishing that 360-degree perimeter, all of our Crick Marines that are loading into those combat raider boats. You'll see them. They're getting in right there on the side of the, of the barge. The game ball is in hand. This mission is not complete, folks, until we get the game ball back ashore here. Now, Detroit, do you think you can help us do this? Remember, the Marines serve for all of us. Many of us talk about supporting the troops, but today a few of you are actually going to get the chance to do just that because these Marines are going to attempt to get the game ball back to the Detroit Lions officials, and they're going to need your help. When these boats pull up along the side of the river here, if they ask for it, please lend a hand to them and help them get ashore. for movement, folks. We're looking for movement down there from the Marines. We're hopefully radioing in. Hopefully that pirate hasn't gotten a hold of it. Lucky Charms, she's she's pretty evil. We have to see down there. Do we have the game ball? We're waiting. Waiting. We're hopefully going to have the game ball here. Everybody waiting with bated breath for our Marines. Let's see. I'm looking for a radio confirmation. We do have it, I'm told. Now all we have to do is get these guys to shore in safe fashion. Again, those pirates are making it very difficult for us. A few of them out of sight right now. I'm told the boats are moving. There they go. Come on, folks. Cheer them on as they make their way up to the wall here. How many Alliance fans do we have here today? A few in blue shirts. <laughs> All right, here comes your game ball. Now, for the Arizona Cardinal fans here, I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, the Lions, they got the full support of the Marines here. Check this out making their way up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, none of this could be possible today without the logistics side of all of this. When you have F-18s flying, when you have Ospreys flying and helicopters flying, the only way you can win a war is if you get the materials there in time to do it. And that includes gas. You gotta pass a little gas to win these wars. Look to your left. For a simulated boom refueling, the Herc would normally have two hoses out, but today the hoses are in and the Hornets are on the side. Take a look up as we welcome our Marines down low 
and bring him in for one last pass up high. Here comes the boom. Awesome, the C-130 right there. Aircraft Commander Alan Coward from Columbia, Missouri. The co-pilot, Lieutenant Rick Prince from Loveland, Colorado. Plane Captain Master Sergeant Rob Hurley and Crew Masters, Gunnery Sergeant Paul Wysak and Corporal Matthew Bolton. Look at that, folks. We got some Marines on deck. Let's see, do we have the game ball? I think I see it holding up. Let's do it. How about it for the Detroit Lions, ladies and gentlemen, and the Marine Corps with the game ball. Well, hopefully you'll follow that game ball on over to the stadium later today to take a look at it. What an incredible job down there. Now look, folks, don't run off. What I want you to do is hang around for our closing ceremonies. But you see these Marines that are down front? Take a good look at them. You know, less than 1% of us here in the United States have the privilege to serve in the United States military. That means that few, fewer and fewer of us even know what it's like to meet a veteran and shake their hand. I'm gonna invite you to do that today. I want you to go look these young men and women in the eye and tell them thank you for their service and just get to know them. That's what this is about. We wanna connect Marines with people right here in Detroit just so you can get to know them. What you've witnessed today is only a small fraction of how the Marine Corps units are employed on a daily basis throughout the world. Somewhere right now, there's Marines doing this very job in the far corners of the world, not here in downtown Detroit. This demonstration that you've seen, as well as the individual Marines that you've met throughout Marine Week Detroit, are a testament to the institutional readiness that our Corps upholds. It's been an honor and a privilege for us to showcase the Marine Corps' capabilities and how it enables us to be America's force in readiness. We ask you to please continue to visit the venues throughout the city and to take time to ask the Marines questions about their proud profession and the great Corps and we'll leave you with this before the start of our closing ceremony. Semper Fidelis, always faithful. Here for an encore performance. Our heliboard forces making their way down the crowd line. Give them a wave. Well, I hope you're taking the chance to meet the Marines. You can see the sights and sounds around Detroit here as we wrap things up. For all the folks at home, I hope if you see Marine Week in your hometown that you come out and see all of it in person. Remember the static displays are open down here on the other side. We still have our closing ceremony though to conduct. That'll take place down front here in just a matter of moments. Well, ladies and gentlemen, let me give another round of applause and let's have it for all of our Marine Corps here in Detroit. We encourage you to walk up, shake the hands of our Marines, get to know the men and women that serve. Again, less than 1% of Americans have worn the uniform. In just a few minutes, we have a final treat in store for you. 
We will hold a closing ceremony, a special closing ceremony, to culminate the week and show our appreciation to the people of Detroit for their help in making Marine Week in Detroit an incredible event. We'd like to take the time to say thank you to a number of people and organizations that have helped bring Marine Week Detroit here to you. The Great Plaza, from which you have been able to watch the MagTap demos, as well as the static display sites, were all provided to us by General Motors, CBRE, Commercial Real Estate Services, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield, the Parks and Recreation Department of Detroit, for the ability to put the Vietnam Wall, the traveling wall, there in Hart Plaza. Our thanks to you. The Detroit Downtown Partnership for the use of the spirit of Detroit Plaza, Campus Meritus, and Cadillac Square. The Cobo Center for our command center spaces. The Detroit Riverfront Conservancy for the use of our landing zone space at West Jefferson. The Detroit Economic Development Corporation for the use of our unit marshalling area. And the Illich family. A big thanks to the Illich family and all of their corporations to include the Detroit Tigers, Detroit Red Wings, Olympia Development, and all of the family of corporations that supported Marine Week. Justin Verlander, Kate Upton, Christy Williams, and the Wins for Warriors organization for their incredible support throughout the week. We'd also like to thank the Detroit Lions at Ford Field, the Detroit Police Department, the GM Renaissance Center, the United States Coast Guard, the Michigan State Police, the Detroit Fire Department, the Camouflage Services, the Canadian Coast Guard, the Federal Aviation Administration, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the Windsor Port Authority, the Windsor Police Department, the Crown Plaza, the Detroit Renaissance Marriott for hosting our Marines. Plus, the University of Michigan, Michigan State University, Wayne State University, Reading Corps, Michigan Veterans Foundation, the Detroit Zoo, Pickett Square, Michigan Department of Natural Resources, Selfridge Air National Guard Base, Dingle Veterans Affairs Hospital, Detroit Convention and Visitors Bureau, plus Gen X and the tremendous local media affiliates at WarburgRadio.com. The list, it goes on and on, and there's no way that we could thank everybody who helped play a part in making this phenomenal event possible. But most importantly, we'd like to thank you, the incredible state of Michigan and the city of Detroit for hosting the United States Marine Corps for their 2017 Marine Week Detroit. Ladies and gentlemen, if you would now direct your attention to center stage, right down there to the GM Plaza for our closing ceremony and it's going to begin in just a few moments. And ladies and gentlemen, if you're down there right in front, We'd like to ask you just to step aside just a little bit and give the Marines some, some space to uh, conduct this final ceremony there. Just along the river walk, there's a nice bow down there, a little bow. Just kind of move back about 10 or 15 feet, if you don't mind, help them out a little bit.
ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to begin the closing ceremony, but first we need you to move back about 10 or 15 feet. If the Marines instruct you to do so, just kindly move so we can start this ceremony just a little bit. 